Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar or well, then we're on for the UK V have a look at the precipitation and temperature over the next five days and it's looking quite likely we do see some precipitation even into the south and the east where it has been so very dry over the last month and the past six months really um, so it does look like we will see some rain over the next few days. The significance of that precipitation still yet to be exactly de uh, determined uh, just because of its positioning of the weather fronts, the instability that is moving through, but where we do see rain, it could be quite heavy and even thundery as we saw in yesterday's video. We'll then have a look at the mid to longer range, as it does look like towards the first third to middle um, of August, it does look like high pressure is gonna firmly take back control initially with a cooler air mass building in from the west, drawing in northerly or easterly winds initially. But we are seeing some signals towards the middle of the month, as I said, high pressure really does just sit over the top of us. We start to build some homegrown warmth, maybe even some heat, and we could even see some very hot air wafting up from the south. And we are still seeing that on some ensemble members and some operational runs today. Nothing concrete, but just signs of seeing maybe something similar to what we saw in the middle of July. We're not seeing anything as severe as that yet. Of course, we saw one severe GFS run a couple days ago. But so far, it's not looking too extreme. But the potential is there and we'll be keeping an eye on it and looking at it in today's video. Just remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And remember to follow me on Twitter as well. The link's in the description. So if we do look on the live radar, you can see there is plenty of precipitation around at the moment again mostly showery of nature and again mostly in the midlands and northern england so some areas in the midlands even in east anglia could see a bit of precipitation today not expecting anything too significant but at least it'll be something to get the a, a bit of water on the ground further north with some heavier precipitation across the far northeast uh northeast sorry northwest of england up towards carlisle over the higher ground up here as well so some heavier precipitation there but mostly it is moderate precipitation showery of nature and you can see heading in from the west we have even more precipitation another weather front moving in this could give precipitation in the south and the east um, again it's an area of instability an area of precipitation and its exact intensity and extent uh, we're still not a hundred percent sure how much rain will still rain we'll see but is likely we do see some quite significant precipitation in the south so if we do just temporarily have a look at the two meter temperatures for today at the moment you can see still in the south and east it's pretty warm still getting up to the mid to high 20s as although it doesn't look amazing from the radar as we just saw we do still actually have pretty warm upper air temperatures so when we do avoid the precipitation and the cloud those temperatures are going to rise to around the mid to high 20s that's going to be a consistent signal over the next five days or so wherever we do avoid that very very um, well, the, the unsettled weather, the cloud and precipitation, it will get warm, if not quite hot, towards the high 20s, as we'll see on the UKV in a minute. But where we have precipitation across the north and the west, it is cooler. Back down to more towards average high teens, low 20s, and even parts of Scotland towards Aberdeen, St Andrews, Edinburgh. Does look still quite warm. We do have um, do do have warmer upper air masses. We do see a bit of the fern effect with the the winds coming in from the west, uh, and you see air descending off the hills. And we do see it compress and warm up. So it's like a bit of the fern effect there along the east. But it is still pretty warm. And it's going to be continuing over the next five days or so. So if we do have a look at the precipitation temperature from the UKV. Now you can see this afternoon around 3pm as this is uh, around the time this is being released. You can see the precipitation across the north. A few showers around. Some cloudy weather as well but some brighter spells. You can see the precipitation across the far south and west of Ireland. And that is moving in and could give some quite heavy precipitation across the Midlands, into East Anglia, maybe even reaching the London area, down into central southern England as well. The exact southern extent of that is going to be all dependent on the live radar. We're not going to know until it really hits us. Um, but that is the approximate positioning of this precipitation through Sunday morning. Now it does spread through, have a bit of lingering showers, and maybe a few heavy thundery showers, maybe breaking out there in a few spots in the afternoon um, and beyond that it does dissipate away 
And then we're seeing a bit of instability through Monday. This is where yesterday we saw some quite heavy big thun heavy showers and thunderstorms break out on the UKV. And we're still seeing a, a signal of that, a lot of instability around, but positioning some of that precipitation slightly further northwards now. Still seeing some showers and heavier precipitation in the south, but the biggest thundery sort of weather and um, big heavy showers much further northwards towards Wales, Northern England, Scotland, who are eventually moving through. And things stay unsettled all the way through Wednesday and Thursday, so still precipitation around. Um, but the signal for dry weather in the south and east does continue. As you saw about that UKV uh, run for the like, next five days, there is precipitation coming for the south. But if it's going to be significant, maybe, maybe not. Uh, it all depends on whether we see those thundery outbreaks, how far southwards the precipitation band does get. Um, but I'm not expecting anything that's going to destroy the drought weather we're having at the moment. We need prolonged a couple of weeks of wetter weather to be able to sort of get it out of this sort of drought conditions we do have at the moment. Um, so it's not going to put an end to it, but it could give us a little bit of respite. It could potentially give maybe 5 to 10 millimetres widely, maybe locally a bit more precipitation over the next five days. Further northwards and westwards, plenty of precipitation around, so we're not going to have any issues with dry weather there in the near future. But yeah does look like there will be some precipitation around but as we'll see in a minute with the longer range models it doesn't look good um if you if you want some wetter weather towards the middle of august it does look like it's going to be turning much drier again so if you look at the max temperatures over the next five days you can see this afternoon temperatures peaking around 24 25 degrees widely maybe even 26 27 as set down towards the london area into kent and essex further north and westwards high teens low 20s as we move beyond that into sunday you see those temperatures once again rising towards the low 20s, high teens, but still maybe mid to high 20s in the south, 25, 26, maybe even 27 degrees. Again, to the, south, to the south of the precipitation. If that precipitation does move further southwards, it won't be quite as warm. And as we head towards Monday afternoon, you can see the temperatures once again rising maybe to 26, 27 degrees, potentially towards central southern England, but widely again. High teens, low 20s, maybe mid 20s in a few spots. And very similar on Tuesday. Widely high teens, low 20s, maybe mid 20s across a lot of England. And then maybe even the high 20s, as you can see there in the London area. Central Southern England could be getting really quite hot indeed. Maybe even touching on heat wave levels. But of course, we need sustained uh, three days to be calling it a heat wave. But it would be reaching heat wave thresholds potentially. So it could be quite a hot day on Tuesday. And we see something similar into Wednesday. Maybe not quite as widely warm, but still. High 20s, 27, 27, 28 degrees. And you can see just to the bottom right of the screen, across northern France, we are seeing mid 30s, 35 degrees. So you can see that hot air isn't too far away. And the reason for that is you look at the upper air temperatures, and you can see the 20 degree ice firm is just to our south. And we are just tapping into around the 12, 13, 14 degree sort of level, giving us temperatures in the high 20s. And the thing is, this hot air is going to be lingering to our south. So as we see in the mid, mid long range in a minute, if we do draw up a southerly, southeasterly, or even southwesterly wind any time in the next couple of weeks, it will turn very warm, if not quite hot. Temperatures could very much skyrocket back into the 30s. 40 degrees or high 30s, what we saw a couple of weeks ago, still very, very unlikely. Uh, but you can't rule it out with this intense hot air mass just to our south. So if we do run through the GFS, have a look at the precipitation, sorry, the pressure charts and the upper air temperatures over the next couple of weeks again you can see westerly flow at the moment low pressure running in this week still warm in the south as i said but eventually by around wednesday thursday time we'll eventually see a cooler air mass move in you can see that hot air that's just sitting to our south eventually gets swept away by a cooler air mass but it still does linger that hot air just across southern france and north spain and then beyond that, as I said, high pressure built in. You can see a big high pressure system built in and a bit of a northeasterly flow. And it is initially a, quite a cool air mass, nothing too great around the 10th of August before the warm air starts to build. And you could even see some hotter conditions maybe wafting up from the south there. Low pressure, a little low pressure towards the Bay of Biscay there, could be interacting with that. It could turn things very thundery, but very hot as well. You can see the 15 degree ice firms involved. Look at the temperature deviation, doesn't look anything too ridiculous, but around 4 to 6 degrees above average, which would give temperatures widely in the high 20s and locally into the low 30s, maybe even towards the mid 30s, 34, 35 degrees, if we get those upper air temperatures in around that 15 
to 20 degree mark. So it could be going very warm, if not quite hot, sort of heat wave conditions, sustained heat wave conditions, not just a few days here or there like we've had recently where we've seen sort of three or four day hot spells. This could be prolonged seven to 10 days we could see if this high pressure really does stick around. Again, it all depends on how quickly the hot air does come in from the south because initially it would be a cooler high pressure system. Still be nice and pleasant with warm August sunshine, but it wouldn't be anything too spectacular until we started to waft up that southerly wind. Because if I do bring it back to day 10, you can actually see we're around four to six degrees below average before those warmer conditions do prevail. So if you look at the GM, see how that does compare. Again, westerly winds over the next couple of days. And that continues before eventually we see a cooler airflow come in later this working week. Before high pressure eventually does build in. And as I said initially, we've got a cool upper air conditions building in. You can see that around the zero degree ice firm trying to push in, but doesn't quite make it all the way to the south. And eventually, at day 10, we start to waft up hotter air from the south again. You look at the wind direction coming in from an easterly, but originating from the south, and temperature deviation is starting to draw up some very warm air from the Mediterranean. And again, you look at those upper air temperatures, if we do zoom in the United Kingdom, look, around 15 degrees plus at 850 HPA, and that would give temperatures widely into the high 20s, low 30s, and again, if we just put on the two meter temperatures around midday on the 8th of August, you already see low 20s, and if we do actually try and have a look at the 6 p.m. temperature, you can see mid to high 20s even there, and of course, the upper air temperatures haven't quite peaked, and you can see across Europe getting towards the high 20s, low 30s widely, and that would spread into the UK if we did continue to see this air mass. So we could be only seven to 10 days away for another really dry spell, prolonged dry spell, but this spell could even be quite quite persistently hot, not spiking like we saw in mid-July where we got up to 40 degrees, but it could be persistently around that high 20s, low 30s, so much more enjoyable sort of heat wave conditions, but nevertheless it would be dangerous um, and it would be uh, and it would be quite oppressive if we did see it prolong uh, for a good few days, if not a week or so. So we'll have to see that. <clears throat> we'll have to see how it does develop, but at this stage, yeah, it doesn't does look like there is a very good chance we see this big high pressure system take over. And there is quite a high chance that a warm, hot air mass does get trapped underneath it. And if it does, we could see persistent high 20s, low 30s, as I said. Now, if we have a look at the ECMWF, see how that does compare. Again, low pressure running in over the next few days, giving precipitation for quite a few areas. Again, uncertain with the exact extent of that. Before, high pressure builds in initially, an easterly flow. But around day 10, you can see that high pressure starting to topple. And we would start to veer those winds more southerly or southeasterly. You can see at the moment, the UK, uh, day 10 is under a very cool air mass, quite a chilly air mass. It wouldn't be too cold at the surface because under higher pressure, especially inland away from any sea breezes across the North Sea, we would see temperatures still rise around average, if not slightly above average, with the warm uh, uh, August sunshine. Uh, as long as there's no precipitation around really with that. But it's as soon as those winds start to veer in from the south and the east, you can see just across Germany, Italy, parts of Spain, towards the Alps, very hot air is just lingering there, ready to get wafted up at very short notice. So even though this does look cool at day 10, it's about a day or two behind the other runs, pulling up a very warm south to southeasterly wind when that high pressure eventually topples in and veers those uh, isobars from a different direction. So do finish by having a look at the ensembles. If we start on the GFS ensembles, you can see warm over the next five days or so. And that's why whenever we do see sunshine, with temperatures getting into the mid to high 20s. We see a bit of cool down around the 5th, 5th to 7th of August with that cooler northeasterly flow. And then beyond that, around the 8th, 9th of August, beyond, you can see most of the ensemble members are well above average. See the GFS operational one there. It's a bit weird. One of the coolest runs there around the 10th of August. The majority, though, around that sort of 12 to 18 degree mark, which would give temperatures... As I said, widely in the mid to high 20s and locally towards the 30s and low 30s if we get towards the warmer end of these ensemble range. So a lot of these ensemble members are going very dry, very low precipitation in the longer term, and most of them are going well above average, potentially very warm, if not very hot. If you have a look at the two meter temperatures, do ignore that spike there around the 8th of August. That's where the ensembles have skipped a, a, a timing or hasn't fully loaded, so it's missing the midday and 6 pm 
output there, so there will be a spike there, it's just not showing. Uh, and you can see warm over the next five days, bit of a cool down around the 5th to around the 9th of August, and then maybe a rise again. Still some cooler outliers holding it down, but a lot of the other ensemble members are getting towards that 25 to 30 degree range of London. Again, they're low resolution, so most likely you'll be a degree or two warmer, so getting towards that high 20s, low 30s quite widely. Now, if you have a look at the ECMWF ensemble to compare it, you actually see ECMWF is a le lot less bullish, very warm still over the next five days, but keeping us much cooler for around the 5th to the 10th of August. A more prolonged cooler spell there, much slower rise back towards average, if not above average. A lot of the ensemble members do get to around or above average, and we do finish the run around the 11th to 13th of August, around or above the 1981 to 2010 mean, but much more cooler runs here so that's why there is still some uncertainty with it i'm still pretty sure we will be seeing this high pressure build in again if we do have a look at the sea level pressure for this east in the run um you can see high pressure does firmly build in the longer term you can see that consist persistent signal there from around the 6th 7th of august initially a cooler air mass but beyond that would be a warm air mass so definitely high pressure building in but the air mass is very uncertain so you see these ensemble members would be must much less bullish to building that high uh, more towards our east, starting to draw up a more of a southerly wind. So we'll have to see exactly how it does play out. It does, though, look, regardless of the upper air mass, it looks uh, very dry. Uh, that is one persistent thing we're seeing on both ensemble members and all operational runs, that high pressure building in, turning things much, much drier. And it could, and, um, and I say could, um, turn very warm, maybe even very hot, and we could even be on the cusp of a prolonged heat wave sort of level nothing ridiculous but a more of a traditional sort of summer heat wave conditions so hopefully we do see something like that because i know a lot of people will be looking forward to that as we're still of course in the school holidays getting towards the middle of august soon going to be back to school for many people uh, many kids so hopefully we do see some warmer drier weather there and we'll just have to see exactly how it does play out but luckily we do see some precipitation over the next five days or so so at least we will see some rain towards the end of july or maybe today and tomorrow and into the start of august before it does look like the especially in the south and the east to be turning much much drier from the around the 7th, 8th of August onwards. And I said, could be turning very hot as well with that. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you again for another video soon.